What's up everyone, I'm Jesse Kazam and welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're going to be diving into a few budget full auto weapons that you can get from around level one or two traders. Uh, there's a ton of weapons in Escape from Tarkov and everybody likes different things. I find I'm much more proficient and confident with a full auto weapon. Um, so we're going to dive into a few of the ones that are available to you and the pros and cons and the value of those. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. As always, we have to start off by kind of defining what budget is, and it's a pretty large definition because it means different things to different people. Uh, some people like to go uh, way less on mods and um, attachments and stuff like that, so they can invest all their money really into high tier ammo. Some people really like, uh, don't mind stepping down the ammo a little bit and then investing way more in their guns, so they want a gun that's more modular. Um, there's a lot to it. Some people would rather spend their money on armor than on guns and just want something super simple and then spend their money elsewhere. So there's going to be a wide variety of, of guns here. You know what I mean? Not all of them you might consider budget, but um, just kind of work with me. We'll get through a few of them. And then if there's anything I miss, uh, drop it in the comments down below as if there's something that I missed that you are really proficient with. Um, so we'll start off with the uh, AK series. Um, a lot of the early games, especially full auto guns, you're going to find from Propor. So um, if you're going full auto and you want an AK right out the get, the only the only one you get is the AKS-74U. Now, these are pretty hard to control in full auto. They've got a decent amount of recoil, but if you're super close quarters or if you're kind of like burst shotting, um, you can totally get away with using these. They are pretty modular and you need to use some for some quests as well, but... It's not something that you really use very long, but you can get access to it. You can either purchase it straight up or trade it for two horses um, from Propor. Now at level two, you open up a lot more um, full auto weapons. So you get to purchase this. You can borrow from one with a suppressor and you can purchase the 74N, the 74 and the AKS 74N. Um, the differences here are mainly on uh, the mounts that are used. Some have the dovetail adapters, some don't, stuff like that. There's not a huge difference between these AKs. Um, just check if you want to be able to put like a PSO or something, check for that dovetail mount right there. Um, and you can see that. But that's three full size, full auto AKs that you can purchase for all roughly the same price um, from Purpore at level two. Um, AKs and AK, right? They're incredibly modular in Tarkov with four grips, pistol grips, butt stocks, magazines, compensators, stuff like that. Um, you can get these to a really controllable recoil, especially later in the game. Um, and they're not insanely expensive. Um, additionally, you can get the 762 version of these full auto AKs, the AKM. Just the AKM, once again, similarly, there's a bunch of different variants that aren't insanely different. Uh, they aren't insanely different from each other. But for three Tashankas, you can barter at level one for an AKM. So this is going to be um, probably a better bet than the AKS 74 U's. It's a 762 weapon, so it's firing a more powerful round, especially than the rounds you can get for these early on. Uh, it's full size and uh, the, the recoil on 7.62 full auto weapons is definitely a bit beefier. They're not something that you're going to want to full auto spray a mid range target. But the fact that it's a full size weapon, it's a little bit beefier ammo. And the fact that the fire rate is slow enough that you can kind of like tap fire and go single um, semi auto when you're on full auto or you can burst somebody down. Now you can purchase the... Um, AKM and the AKMS, which is a similar, you just can't replace the buttstock. Um, with uh, you can buy these at level two per pour for 41 and 38,000 rubles. Um, there's a few other varieties that you can barter for. So, once again, they're all similar. The, the M's are a different caliber, but the rest of these are pretty similar. But if, you know, if you're finding these items in raid, then that's even more budget because these cigarettes have like almost no use. But if you're seeing them a lot and you pull them, then you can now, you know, barter for one of these, which is super nice. Um, the Keter is another one that you can purchase. Um, this is a, an interesting caliber. The Keters, it's nine by 18, nine by 19 is the caliber that's really considered nine mil. Um, but these are nine by 18. Um, it's pretty fast fire rate, 900 rounds per minute. So you're really dumping those mags. And that's kind of what makes these devastating. 
Um, you can check the ammo charts, which I'll link below, or the Battle Buddy app to kind of find the best ammo if you want armor pen. Any of these smaller caliber are really aren't going to have high armor pen um, rounds. But for really early game or mid game, they definitely can be um, definitely usable. And if you're going for flesh damage, like if you're trying to shoot somebody repeatedly in the leg or the arm to kill them that way, you can definitely find some some rounds that have high flesh damage incredibly high to high rate of fire which means you can drop somebody using like leg meta or something relatively quickly um this is great for scavs as well because not a lot of scavs have armor or they might not have armor that covers their um face like you know no scav is going to have a face shield so for face shots and stuff like that like these can be really really nice against scavs Twenty thousand rubles they're very affordable at level two you gain access to um the suppressed version of the keter um, that just comes with a suppressor on it, 35,000 rubles. Once again, now you've got a suppressed full auto weapon that can use, you know, leg meta or anything like that to drop enemies. Um, and then also the clin, which is basically the same thing, except for it has a 1000, uh, round per minute rate of fire. So it shoots even a little bit faster. That's really the only difference there. Um, the PPSH is something you can buy at level two per poor, which is the new, uh, weapon that they added. Uh, it's, you know, it's fun thousand rounds per minute. It shoots super fast. They're not very modular. This was, you know, almost like more of like a novelty weapon, but you can find these on scavs. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty effective. They shoot really, really fast. And the recoil is actually really manageable. Um, you're kind of stuck with the iron sights though, which is something that for me, I'm not normally proficient with iron sights. Now, when we move into the nine millimeter range, there's a ton of full auto nine millimeter weapons um, that are available to you pretty early on. Um, you know, in Tarkov, I would say one of the most important things is the ammo. Um, you know, you, you are going to want to use a gun that you feel comfortable with and you are going to want to use a gun that has, you know, manageable recoil and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, if you're hitting shots with ammo that's not meant for the target, for if you have flush damage rounds and you're shooting an armored target, that is going to be a big thing. And for the most part, the 9mm, the 9x19 nine um, round is pretty lackluster um, for the mid to late game. But in the really early game or once again for scavs, you can find high flush damage rounds or you can find some relatively decent armor penetration rounds. Now, at level one purport, you can barter for the PP-19, which is a really great budget weapon. It's full auto. It's nine mil. It's really manageable recoil. These are uh, pretty modular along the way. You can even barter for, I think, mechanic for some pretty modded out ones. Um, and at level two here, you can even purchase one for 20,000 rubles. So nine mil ammo's not hard to come by. It's not very expensive. These guns are not very expensive um, and uh, you can wreck with them. I mean, th these are great. I've seen Pestily run labs with these things and just absolutely destroy players and um, raiders. So, um, but it's just all about kind of knowing it with all the guns, but it's knowing, you know, what you're getting yourself into with the ammo. It's not like these bigger rifle caliber rounds. Um, I mean, even these, of course, are going to have rounds that aren't very effective, but with nine mil, it's just something to be aware of. Now, Peacekeeper also sells quite a bit of nine millimeter weapons. Um, right out the gate, the MP5, you can barter for with, for eight of these knives, which you can find on scavs. So collecting these is actually not too hard. Um, but the MP5 is a uh, single fire, full auto, and burst fire. As far as I know, it's the only weapon in the game that you can burst fire. I probably wouldn't use that because you can just kind of do that on your own with your mouse. But the MP5, these are a little bit harder to mod and put like optics on and stuff like that, especially early game. But the iron sights aren't bad. Um, they shoot 800 rounds per minute. And yeah, it's not another nine millimeter, you know, full auto weapon. The MP5 Curs, the, the tiny one, I would really not recommend this the you know it comes with the super tiny mags uh you can buy the bigger ones it's just even more recoil it, it, you know what i mean it's not if you're if you're down to the wire of course you can use it but it's just without the butt stock it's just this tiny little version but you can buy those right out the gate so if you're really looking for something you can do that at level two peacekeeper though 
Uh, I know Peacekeeper is a little bit harder to level up, but um, you can get to level two without having to do any of his quests if you've got the Edge of Darkness edition. Um, I'm not sure if you can if you don't, but um, at level two, it really does open up a ton of other nine mil weapons. So the MPX can be purchased, which is just another 850 rounds per minute, nine mil full auto weapon. Uh, these can be modded like crazy later game. You can mod these to be like absolute laser beams with like 29 recoil or something like that. But even 35 vertical recoil is like insane. It's way better than you can get any AK even end game as far as recoil. Um, so using these early game can be pretty effective. It's really easy to slap an optic on them, which is what makes these really nice. The uh, PP19 and the uh, MP5, you kind of have to get adapters. Uh, this you can just throw an optic right on. You can suppress all that kind of stuff. It does unlock the ability to purchase the MP5s straight up at level two. Um, you can also purchase the MP5 SD, which is a suppressed version. And then you also need this for a gunsmith uh, quest. And then also the MP9, which is a relatively newer submachine gun that um, they've added to the game, which is, it's just kind of another nine mil. It comes with all the kind of rails. You can put a grip on it. You can put an optic on it. You can put a suppressor on it and uh, 900 rounds per minute, another really fast firing nine millimeter weapon. So there is quite a bit of nine millimeter full auto guns available early game. Uh, Peacekeeper sells most of them. Um, so getting him leveled up, if that's something that you're interested in, most of the guns we talked about with the exception of the, the NATO weapons, you know, your MPXs and your MP9, stuff like that. Uh, all the ones that we talked about from Purpur, the Klin, the Ketters, the AKs, almost all this stuff can be found uh, on scavs. So just looting um, these can be can be really easy. A lot of these guns are smaller, like the 74Us or the PP19s, uh, the PPSHs. When you pull the mag out, they're really thin. Um, so these are relatively inexpensive guns, and you can find them on scavs. So you can just fill your backpack with weapons. Um, that that are full auto if that's kind of what you're into I, I you know like i've said i'm really a proponent of finding something that feels comfortable i found that i was much more uh, confident holding something that i can full auto especially in close quarters um, engagements so this is normally what i stick to but a lot of people uh prefer semi-auto weapons so it's just up to you but that's kind of it those are the ones that are, are available to you pretty early on uh, a lot of them you can get on scavs and get for free um, but hopefully this helped. Hopefully this kind of just brought to light maybe something that you hadn't used before or something that you have in your stash that you haven't uh, tried yet. I would definitely recommend trying all these, finding something you like, and then sticking with it. And hopefully it can get you more proficient in your raids. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. Uh, if you liked it, drop a like, comment down below with any questions, any guides you'd like to see me make in the future, or if there's any guns I missed or anything I missed in this video, let me know. Let's start a discussion down in the comments. Uh, think about subscribing for more Tarkov content like this. I'm always trying to help shorten the learning curve of the game and get you and your raids having fun as soon as possible. Like I said, I stream Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. We've got the Twitch, Twitter, Discord. The Discord is a great place uh, for to ask questions, maybe get help with some quests, or even find some people to run some raids with if you're struggling. So definitely check that out. Um, but thank you so much again for stopping by, and I'll definitely see you all on the next one.